SCP-2408, Orox Fall. Criminals come in many different forms, from the lowly mugger, to sophisticated hackers, to the leaders of drug empires. The Foundation doesn't usually involve itself in policing criminals, unless of course those criminals become involved with anomalies, whether on purpose or on accident. The SCP we'll be discussing today concerns a large criminal organization in Russia, one that's dark even by Russian criminal organization standards. While they do enough bad things without even looking at their anomalous elements, the Foundation is interested for one specific reason, their connection to Sarcasism, an anomalous religion devoted to the transfiguration of the human form. SCP-2408 is the designation for several anomalies associated with the group known as the Hunter's Black Lodge, a criminal organization and sarkic cult primarily active in the post-Soviet states. The first type of anomalies involved are genetically normal humans capable of physically transforming themselves. These transformations can include increasing their mass, primarily in the form of muscle, by two or three times, increasing their bone density, increasing their testosterone and adrenaline production by massive amounts, increasing the size of their organs in proportional amounts, and increasing the size of their testes and adrenal glands to well beyond proportional sizes, although their brain does not appear to change in size. They can manifest various non-human traits, such as wolf, bear, deer, or octopus features, can shift between bipedal and quadrupedal movement, amplify their senses beyond human limits, and of course amplify their strength, speed, and regenerative abilities. They are able to perform these transformations within 10 to 30 seconds, and can reverse the changes while maintaining cellular stability. Essentially, they are Sarkic Hulks. These creatures, along with the other anomalies we'll get to, were discovered during Operation Falconrath, an infiltration by Foundation agents into the Hunter's Black Lodge. The Black Lodge had been linked to extortion, murder, robbery, gambling, prostitution, human, drug, and weapons trafficking, and underground fighting rings. While that all sounds like pretty normal stuff for a criminal organization, the specifics of how they practiced those activities were as abnormal due to their sarcic nature. One of the drugs they trafficked and distributed was an anomalous anabolic androgenic steroid they titled Wrath, which triggers anomalous levels of muscle and bone growth in subjects when injected. Continued or excessive use of the drug will result in Proteus Cronenberg syndrome and or death. Proteus Cronenberg syndrome seems to be similar to the transformations that the creatures are capable of, except it's non-reversible. Analysis suggests that the wrath drug is harvested from the adrenal gland of an unidentified species of animal. They also traffic and distribute a drug titled Lust, which when snorted, triggers various sensory hallucinations, increased heart palpitations, increased sexual arousal, and feelings of euphoria, with studies showing it to be more addictive than heroin. It's growing increasingly prevalent across the world as a club drug, having been found in North America, Europe, and Southeast Asia, and while nothing about its effects is specifically anomalous, it seems to have been derived from the spinal fluid of an unidentified species. Victims of the criminal organization have been found impaled on large organic spines containing human DNA, or completely torn apart. Their injuries are suggestive of attacks from several different animals, such as bloody hoof prints, wounds consistent with goring by a horned or tusked animal, and teeth marks indicative of a large wolf-like creature. If that weren't enough, of course, they also distribute a number of dangerous biological agents, chief among them being the Red Death, also known to us as SCP-610, the flesh that hates. The Foundation became aware of the Black Lodge after the dissolution of the USSR, thanks to information from Gru Division P. 
Division P were never able to fully contain or neutralize the Black Lodge, with one source describing the destruction of the group on several different occasions, only for it to reappear months later, stronger than before. Division P documentation suggests that the Black Lodge's headquarters is located in Moscow, at a location referred to as the Old Altar. They gleamed this information from a man named Ankudinov, who was a victim of some sort of ritual, losing his jawbone in the process, along with suffering severe psychological trauma. He was recovered from Moscow's sewage systems, and interviewed by Division P before being executed for criminal involvement, once his survival was deemed no longer necessary. He's asked where the old altar is located, but he doesn't know, as he was blindfolded, suggesting only that it's underground. He describes the interior as an old temple with black stones, the smell of blood and meat, and the sounds of chanting and drumming. He was forced to fight in some sort of gladiatorial combat for the glory of the hunt, and someone or something known as Orok. He escaped among the corpses that were tossed into the sewer system, but he says that he was weak and worthless, and if he were stronger, he would have been culled with honor. The Foundation decided to send in a single MTF agent to infiltrate the organization, a member of MTF Psi-13, Witch Hunters. Psi-13 is a highly classified Joint Foundation GOC task force created as part of Project Citra Acra. You may remember Citra Acra from SCP-2480, an unfinished ritual, a project initiated to combat the rising invasion of Sarkic entities into baseline reality. As part of the project, Psi-13 operatives are trained in counter-occult stratagems and equipped with a modified Sig Sauer pistol utilizing incendiary and corrosive ammunition. The agent began operating in Moscow as a contract killer under an alias, eventually developing a criminal reputation and gaining the attention of the Black Lodge. They contacted him and instructed him to visit a popular nightclub known as Red Lanterns, a Black Lodge front involved in forced prostitution, human trafficking, and the distribution of illegal and frequently anomalous narcotics. The agent was not equipped with a wire, but instead utilized a dead drop involving leaving a message written in security ink inside of an empty bottle placed into a waste container outside of his apartment complex, which was then retrieved by another agent masquerading as a homeless local photographed, and then destroyed. He was observed entering the nightclub at 9 o'clock p.m., is soon escorted upstairs to a VIP suite, and is not seen exiting the nightclub until four days later. He later leaves a dead drop message explaining what exactly happened. He was brought to a circular table where six men and one elderly woman were seated, with the leader of the Black Lodge, a man named Otari Yosava, sitting at the far end. The agent describes him as having a menacing air to him, muscular, never smiling or removing his sunglasses. Yosava skipped the pleasantries, instead remarking on how nice it was to see someone who didn't mind doing a bit of wet work, a euphemism for assassinations. He also noted that the agent was not working with any of the criminal elements in Russia, and how rare and dangerous it is to work solo in Moscow. The agent said that he had received a few offers, but told them in not-so-polite terms that they weren't worth his time. Yosava wasn't impressed by the agent's bravado, suggesting that maybe his luck is about to run out. The agent says that Yosava was hard to read, with his tone and body language being firm but hardly aggressive. He told him that the other gangs were weak, and he didn't need to try his luck with the lowest cards in the deck. At this point, the elderly woman, who the agent remarks was noticeably pale and covered with unusual tattoos, leaned over and whispered in Yosava's ear. Yosava then refers to the agent with a Russian word literally meaning cow, but is used in the Russian gulag system to refer to someone that is purposefully brought along during a prison break 
specifically to be eaten afterwards in order to survive in the Siberian wilderness. The usage of the word stuck out to the agent, as it's not really a great thing to be referred to. Yasava tells him that he's being given a single chance to prove himself, in the way of an initiation, but for now they'll drink and be merry. A bottle of vodka is brought out, the agent pours himself a glass, and the group drank. The agent believes there might have been some sort of tranquilizer in the bottom of his glass, as he blacked out and found himself tied up and naked on the floor, gagged with a hood over his head. They eventually came for him and carted him off for a long time, perhaps an hour or two. He recalls hearing the sound of old pipes and flowing water, the air chilly and damp, and the scent of rust and earth. There were also voices, not all of which were speaking Russian, instead speaking in some sort of Sarkic language. They eventually chained him by the neck to a pillar of some kind, untied the ropes, and pulled off his hood and gag. He found himself in a dimly lit area resembling an amphitheater, which seemed to be fairly ancient. There were four other men in similar positions to him, along with a large crowd numbering in the hundreds observing from the stands. Some of the audience were wearing red and white robes, others were dressed in plain clothes or business attire. He was injected with something, and everything afterwards was a blur. He recalls hearing chanting skulls being cracked, eyes being gouged, and the feel of flesh between his teeth. Then came a celebration of drugs, food, women, and flashes of violence, but all of his memories of the event are vague and disjointed. He awoke in his apartment with his skin still caked in blood, and a tattoo on his body resembling a black cyclops skull with horns and tusks. It seems that he's been accepted into the Black Lodge. His first job involved weapons trafficking for a firearms company long suspected of having Sarkic ties. The agent says that the Black Lodge is a lot like any other Russian crime syndicate, being filled with thugs motivated mostly by greed. But he also says that they're nastier than any other syndicate, which says quite a bit. Within the hierarchy are twelve great mothers, believed to be Volutar, high-ranking Sarkic cultists that serve as advisors to a Karsist, essentially a form of high priest. The enforcers in the Black Lodge refer to them as hags, crones, and witches, although never to their faces. The great mothers refer to each other as sisters, and all wear the same black peasant outfit with plenty of tattoos. The agent says that the term criminal underground has a very literal meaning for the Black Lodge, as there are plenty of abandoned bunkers, forgotten crypts, and metro tunnels underneath Moscow. There's also something far more ancient underneath, and he believes that Moscow was built atop a Sarkic temple. He talks of a dungeon containing rusted torture equipment, definitely from before the Russian Revolution in the early 1900s, and possibly from the time of Troubles in the early 1600s. The Foundation looked further into the Red Lantern's nightclub, finding evidence that a church, presumably Russian Orthodox, once existed at the same place. The agent has been fortunate in gleaming some information from one of the Great Mothers, whom he refers to as Five. Five is apparently going senile, and is gentle, friendly, and naive, traits not normally associated with Sarkites. According to Five, the Black Lodge began in the Gulags of Siberia, like many other crime syndicates, during the time period known as the Bitch Wars. During this time, between 1945 and 1953, Joseph Stalin made an offer to many prisoners, granting them pardons, or a reduction of their prison term, if they agreed to serve in the Russian military during World War II. After the war ended, many of those that had agreed were sent back to the prisons, but were now on the bottom rung of the prisoner hierarchy due to collaborating with the government. 
In order to survive, many of them continued to collaborate with prison officials, leading to an internal prison war, with prison authorities turning a blind eye. The survivors of this war would end up forming the modern Russian Mafia. Yosava's father had escaped from the Gulag in 1951, and had been responsible for the resurrection of the Black Lodge, an old organization that had apparently become defunct at some point. He had encountered something in the Siberian wilderness, which in turn led the Great Mothers to seek him out and show him what he had forgotten, although the agent couldn't get clarification on what that meant. Five seemed happy to be able to share this information and feel nostalgic about the old ways. She ended up handing him some old notes that she had taken based on Sarkic scriptures, which the agent transcribes for the Foundation. Five claims that Moscow was originally known as Orox Fall and was a Sarkic settlement. Here, Orok, the saint of war, sacrificed himself for the blood of gods and tyrants. While describing the settlement, she referred to different locations as the heart, lungs, and skull. In the next message, the agent requests to have his name, as well as what he's done, removed from the final report, as well as the immediate application of amnestics after the mission is over. Most of his targets so far have been degenerates and criminals, but this time he was sent after the family of a government official that was seeking to crack down on the Black Lodge. He was told to make an example of his wife and daughter, not to kill them, but to leave scars that will never heal. The rest of the message is expunged. He later spoke again with Five about sarcasm making sure not to call it that, as Sarkites refer to their religion as Nalka, a word meaning hunger. She speaks of Grand Karsist Ion in a whimsical manner, skipping over the parts that involve glorified torture and murder. She speaks about the early days of Sarkicism, about honor, friendship, virtue, and liberation as they fought against the evil Deva. The agent believes that Sarkicism changed long before she came around, and perhaps she's just begun to interpret the religious texts differently, speaking with a tone of regret. Maybe she's wrong, trying to see the good under layers of madness and atrocity, but either way the agent suspects that Five is an aberration among the Great Mothers. He wonders if, perhaps, she knows who he actually is. He also discusses the initiation rite that he went through, which occurs in an arena. It's blood sport disguised as a ritual, or a ritual disguised as blood sport, involving six combatants. Many come to watch and bet on the match, a number wearing animal skulls and the clean suits of billionaires. Apparently Five is not a fan, along with the other great mothers, who are more traditional proto-Sarkites compared to the modern neo-Sarkites in the rest of the Black Lodge. The agent is later assigned to work the torture dungeon, something they refer to as the basement's basement. Torture is performed in an attempt to gather information, examples are made, organs are harvested, and sometimes it's done just to satisfy Yosava's sadism. There's one cell in the dungeon that's different though, containing a heavy door with a small slit to peer through and another for food. Inside, the agent saw a man with no eyes and nose, instead with just a gaping hole in his face. It reminded him of a cyclops and the tattoo they put on him, so perhaps they're connected. The man was sitting on the floor with chain-linked hooks holding his body completely in place. The agent thought he was dead at first, except for the heavy breathing and the slow movements of his chest. He later learns from Five that that's actually Yosava's half-brother Mikhail. Apparently the two have somewhat of a rivalry, but Five was vehement that the rivalry is not why Mikhail is in the cell. 
It seems that he instead volunteered to do it as part of some sort of ritual. Beyond that, things are getting pretty strange for the agent, who has begun to hallucinate, or not. The angles in the nightclub and below are becoming wrong, giving him a headache if he stares at them for too long. Yesterday, he woke up in a bathroom stall with a half-eaten woman. The prostitutes at the nightclub look human one moment and then monstrous the next, staring at him with feral, hungry eyes. Five once referred to them as Rusalki, a type of beautiful monster similar to a siren. He thought she was speaking figuratively, but now he's not so sure. They head into the back rooms with men and come out an hour later looking satisfied, but the men never come back out. While watching the pit fights, he says that there are things in the audience that aren't entirely human, and there are sounds he can't explain, like a heartbeat or roars, something from deep below where all the blood and corpses go. This was the last message received from the agent, who was declared missing in action three weeks later. After a lot of deliberation, it was decided that the Foundation would launch a series of raids against multiple Black Lodge sites, including the Red Lantern's nightclub. During the raids, the creatures described at the start underwent their physical transformations. Despite the Foundation expecting heavy casualties, they managed to neutralize the monsters with minimal loss thanks to the use of incendiary armaments. It soon became apparent, though, that the Black Lodge had provided minimal manpower to defend, only a small fraction of their total population. The raids resulted in the discovery of another anomaly, a megalithic temple complex located deep beneath Moscow. The Foundation has dated it as being at least 3,000 years old, making it the oldest standing structure in Russia. Its exterior is composed of black granite, but its interior is entirely organic, comprised of bone, muscle, and viscera. In front of the complex was a gladiatorial arena and a large altar, and hanging from the cavern ceiling were the remains of twelve elderly women, each disemboweled and hanged via their own intestines. This leads to the final anomaly, a humanoid organism located directly beneath the temple complex. The entity seems to be immobile and likely brain dead, and although it is genetically human, it displays a number of features that do not naturally occur among humans. It has a single eye located at the center of its face, a flat nasal slit rather than a protruding nose, Husks, horns, and various other corneous protrusions. Three rows of sharpened teeth with enlarged and heavily muscled jaws. And a partial exoskeleton, with both it and its internal skeleton being anomalously strong. Its most notable trait, of course, though, is its size, with an estimated standing height of 300 meters, or nearly 1,000 feet, and a weight of 70,000 tons. Based on the unusual length of its arms relative to the rest of its body, it likely moved similarly to a gorilla. Further DNA analysis and investigation has led to the hypothesis that this entity achieved at least part of its unusual size through the absorption of potentially more than 100,000 other organisms. The entity is accessible via three distinct shafts, two of which are equipped with mechanical lifts, one leading to the entity's skull, the other to its groin. It's feared that the creation of more shafts would result in structural instability, potentially endangering a large area of Moscow. The third shaft leads to the entity's stomach and is located directly below the arena, allowing blood and viscera to pass between the iron grates and provide sustenance to the entity. 
The bronze tips of over 3,000 arrows, harpoons, and spears belonging to a wide range of Eurasian cultures have been extracted from its body so far, but an exact cause of its current disabled state has yet to be determined. Portions of its body appear to be undergoing slow decay, while other portions appear to be regenerating. It's believed that the anomalous drugs distributed by the Black Lodge came from certain organs of the entity's body, which were surgically removed and smuggled out of Moscow prior to the Foundation's raids. This means that the Black Lodge knew the raids were coming, thus leaving behind only a token resistance. Their influence continues to expand, and the spread of their anomalous drugs continues to grow, with longtime addicts developing unusual physical traits such as leathery skin, skeletal protrusions, and various other mutations. The Foundation has ordered the capture and humane termination of all those afflicted, which will remain in effect until the drugs are properly contained. So, if Five is to be believed, long ago there was a great Sarkic entity known as Orok, the saint of war in the Sarkic faith. She says that he sacrificed himself here for the blood of gods and tyrants, although what exactly that means is left to our imagination. He fell here, and a Sarkic settlement and temple was built on top of him in order to continually provide blood sacrifice in order to regenerate him. The city of Moscow eventually grew out of this settlement, mostly forgetting its Sarkic roots. The Black Lodge, led by Yosava's father and the Great Mothers, re-established the blood sacrifice and the spread of Sarkic influence in Moscow and beyond. The Foundation has Orok contained now, so at least there will be no more blood sacrifice, but that's not stopping the Black Lodge from using various organs harvested from Orok to create some really trippy Sarkic drugs. The agent at one point describes Sarkicism as a disease, with more carriers than they ever imagined, and the Foundation has an extremely tough time trying to actually contain it. It's a shame that the agent didn't make it out, but at least his efforts led to the containment of one of the most potentially powerful entities in Sarkicism. <laughs>